Okay, and action. Go. Jedi's fastest scene began slow and small. You think? Yeah. These videotapes of the models in action were made months before principal photography began. They guided creation of the final sequence at every stage of its development. A real, what about a real close one on that bike? They're like really close. Yeah. And all you see is this big thing dropping behind him in his loop. Instead of trying to even play, you know, like almost, like even closer to like that. Yeah. Let's do it. All right. All right, so this will be four. So let's use that slate. So close shot, focus at about two inches. That's it. Dennis Muren and Joe Johnston okay, aren't playing with and toys. They're working yep. with them yep. to make moving storyboards for the speeder bike sequence. <laughs> Let's see if we can get the real shots done. Okay. These shots, called animatics, were cut together into a full but small scale version of the sequence as it would appear in the final film. The editors even added temporary sound effects. Next shot. Yeah. Number 80. Eight. Now he won't stand up. There we go. Oh, number 80. Okay, ready? Yep. And action. Cut. Interesting to compare these in uh, a year or so to the final shots. Here are the final shots, which took another year to complete. That process began in a redwood forest in Northern California. These men are using a steady cam to make background plates for the scene. The gyroscopically mounted camera will in effect smooth their passage, providing bump-free images that seem to soar. They are shooting in extreme slow motion, two frames per second. When their film is projected like this, it will create a streaking succession of high-speed images. Foreground objects, or actors, to be seen moving against the background or shot against a blue screen. From these shots, black and white maps are generated. These are combined with the background to create a holdout area where the foreground image can be placed in final printing, as it is in this shot from the finished film. It's necessary to use puppets, like this one of Princess Leia, for some blue screen work, especially when it involves high-speed action that can't be photographed full scale. In shots of this kind, the object remains stationary and the camera provides the motion. These rapid pullbacks will be used in the film to create the illusion of the bike speeding away from camera heading for infinity. Pull next to that guy. The editor spoke temporary dialogue for the animatic tapes, which were constantly consulted as the scene came together. As you can see, we duplicated the animatic sequence when we did this shot against the blue screen. Get alongside that one! Here's how all the elements we've seen in the process of creation are finally brought together in the finished film. The bike chase seems faster. I mean, it's traveling along at a great amount of speed, but at the same time, uh, it's more realistic than, say, the trench battle in the first film. Uh, the trench battle is fairly clean. Uh, you're speeding along. It's a fairly abstract graphic coming at you. There are uh, laser bolts and things going around you, but it uh, takes place in outer space. It's in an environment that you don't understand. The, what makes the speeder bike chase seem faster and work better is the fact that you're in a real forest and there are trees that you can crash into. Uh, that element, just the, it's, again, it's a, it's a dramatic element, plot element. It's the trench, only we put some obstacles in there that you might hit. And once you do that, it becomes infinitely more dramatic. <laughs>
pace, plot. They're meaningless without great characters to motivate them. Star Wars has been rich in those from the beginning. How did we get into this mess? I really don't know how. We seem to be made to suffer. It's our lot in life. You're always surprised with characters. I mean, in film, it's even more dramatic than it is in, uh, in writing. Because eventually, you actually take a real person and stick them into that character. And that real person brings with him, or her, an enormous package of reality. I mean, 3PO is just a hunk of plastic. And without Tony Daniels in there, it just isn't anything at all. I had a different idea for the character originally. I wanted him to be more of a used car dealer, very slicko, very oily. But that character inhabited that costume so strongly because of what Tony had done that I couldn't change it. Where do you think you're going? Well, I'm not going that way. It's much too rocky. This way is much easier. What makes you think there are settlements over there? Don't get technical with me. What mission? What are you talking about? I've just about had enough of you. Go that way. You'll be malfunctioning within a day, you nearsighted know, scrap pile. And don't let me catch you following me, begging for help, because you won't get it. If it required an act of high imagination to create a lovable droid, think of what was involved in creating a new star for Empire. When I came to the second film, to start working on uh, The Empire Strikes Back, um, a lot of the information and the training that takes place was originally designed to be done by Ben. But since I killed off Ben in the first film, uh, it left me with a lot of exposition, a lot of training scenes that I didn't have anybody to perform. So I had to come up with a new Jedi Master who was even more powerful than Ben. And I had to come up with somebody who would be interesting to watch. I am wondering, why are you here? I'm looking for someone. Looking? Found someone you have, I would say. <laughs> right. Help you again? Yes. Mm. I don't think so. I'm looking for a great warrior. Oh! <laughs> great warrior. <laughs> Wars not make one great. <laughs> when I was very apprehensive about how that was going to work. Could I take a main character in a movie and use a little rubber puppet? And would that, I mean, is it going to happen or is it just going to be a disaster? And, uh, and right up until the moment where he was on film and talking, it looked like it was going to be a disaster. You know, little hints, well, it looks pretty good. Frank can do some really funny things and that sort of seems to work. And is it going to happen? But then when it goes onto the screen, it's magic. <laughs> oh, you're making a mess. <laughs> hey, <laughs> that's mine, or I will help you not. I don't want your help. I want my lamp back. I'm going to need it to get out of this slimy mud hole. Mud hole? Slimy? My hole this is. What? <laughs> R2, let him have it. R2! Move along, little fellow. We got a lot of work to do. No, no, no. Stay and help you, I will. <laughs> Find your friend. Mm -hmm. I'm not looking for a friend. I'm looking for a Jedi Master. Uh, Jedi Master? Yoda. You seek Yoda. You know him? Mm hmm. Take it to him, I will. <laughs> yes, yes, but now, bless me. Come. <laughs> Good food, come. <laughs> I think more than anything else in Star Wars is the characters have always been a surprise and a delight as they've come to life. 